The coaxial cable is a transmission line composed of an inner conducting wire of radius A and an outer conducting sheath of radius B. The space between the two conductors is filled with a dielectric having a relative permittivity of epsilon r. The dominant mode for this transmission line is TEM, with the electric field lines pointing from one conductor to the other and the magnetic field lines wrapping around the center conductor. The fields are entirely contained internally. None reach into the surrounding space. This is one of the greatest strengths of the coaxial cable transmission line, because it means that it is completely protected from outside interference. You can run a great many coaxial cables near one another, and they don't interact. Each continues to operate completely independently. Coaxial cables are also flexible and inexpensive, and the cutoff frequency of the first higher order mode, which is TE11, is high enough to allow a very wide band of single mode operation. On the other hand, coaxial cables are difficult to fabricate. You will usually need to buy them prefabbed, which means that you have a fixed number of designs to choose from, and they are unbalanced. So if you are using one to feed a balanced load, like an electric dipole, you will need to design a ballon to compensate. Coaxial cables are also often quite lossy over long distances, so their use is constrained to close-range applications. The characteristic impedance of a coaxial cable may be calculated from its geometric parameters together with the dielectric response of the material filling the space between the conductors. This is the equation we used for that calculation. Z0 equals the natural log of B over A divided by 2 pi times eta, the intrinsic impedance of the material between the conductors, or the square root of mu over epsilon. Since the dominant wave is TEM and exists entirely within that dielectric, the phase velocity of the guided wave is just 1 over the square root of mu epsilon, or C, the phase velocity of light in a vacuum, divided by the square root of the relative permittivity of the dielectric. And the wavelength of the guided wave is the phase velocity divided by the frequency. Notice that the ratio of B to A is the main geometric parameter that plays a role here. As long as that ratio stays constant, the characteristic impedance is the same. So a coax could be tapered or expanded without causing any change in impedance, as long as both A and B were scaled together. To calculate the cutoff frequency of the TE11 mode, which is the lowest frequency higher order mode, use this equation, 1 over pi times the sum of A and B times the square root of mu times epsilon. For all frequencies below that mode cutoff, the coax will be operating in its single mode transmission bandwidth and only transmitting the TEM mode. So as an example, suppose we wanted to analyze the performance of a coaxial cable where the inner radius was equal to 1 mm and the outer radius, B, was equal to 4 mm, and where the dielectric constant, epsilon r, is equal to 1.2. If we plug these values into our equation for the characteristic impedance of the TEM mode, we find that the characteristic impedance of this line is 75.9 ohms. And we can also calculate the cutoff frequency of the TE11 mode, which is 17.4 GHz. So as long as this line is being operated at frequencies below 17.4 GHz, there is no possibility of higher order mode propagation.